Welcome to 3CI Training. My name is Ron Shaw and this is going to be a short video on how to configure your um, PIX firewall to connect to your um, DSL or cable modems via the DHCP. Now, first let me bring up this little uh, scenario here. And what happens is, let's take this, as you can see here from many cable companies, internet connection, uh, the ISP informs him that you have to set a, um, a DHCP address. Now, in here this presents some challenges and let's look at these challenges here typically there's a modem in front of your PICS or ASA uh, which connects to the ISP uh, the ISP provides you some type of public IP address via DHCP uh, there's NAT in place that we're going to have to do the internal to the outside and then of course the PICS acts as a DHCP server on the local lands which gives your host out so um, we'll sit there and I'd like to show you this particular topology here and here's how we're going to be setting up uh, and going through the configuration steps now as you can see here this is the ISP router uh, and this could either be DSL cable connection doesn't matter and then this will be your uh, outside interface on your um, PIX firewall which is going to receive its address via DHCP now on the inside here um, you can see the PIX firewall is going to be on a 172.16.10, which is a private IP addressing. And we're going to be con concerned with configuring this area right here and this area right here to allow this host to go out and connect to the Internet somewhere. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm using a VMware here, and I've got my uh, connection um, um, hyperkernel session already connected to my PIX firewall. So one of the first things you're going to need to do is uh, let's get some basic configurations configured. So um, we'll go in here and hit the enable. As you can see right now I don't have any passwords in there but we'll fix that in later videos. So let's go into the configuration mode. Now the first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to start on the outside and get the outside interface. Now for that we're going to go to interface E0. Now that's going to be the um, outside interface and that's how we got it connected. Now from here I'm going to give it an IP address and I'm going to tell it to do it DHCP. Now I'm going to add one other special command in here uh, and this command is going to be set route. Now what this set route's going to do is it's going to replace the route command because we don't know what that distant end router's IP address is in most cases. When we look here, I don't know what the ISP's router um, IP address is uh, in most cases. So what we'll do is we'll use the set route command to tell it to pull it from the uh, DHCP server on the uh, ISP side. Now, of course, I'm going to sit there and, and, and name my interface outside. And what this will do, uh, it'll set the um, default um, level to zero. Now, let's take a few seconds for this to activate. Then once we get this done, I'll have to issue the all-important command, no shut. And that's no shutdown for the interface. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is go to E1. Now, in here, this is the inside network, and if you remember in my picture here, um, this is going to be set to uh, 172.16.1.1. Now, this is going to be the gateway my host used to get to the outside world. In here, it, and again, it's just IP address, and then we'll give it the subnet mask. I'm using a... a, a um, CIDR notation of 24. Now I'll, I'll name the interface inside. Oop, got to spell inside right. Now it's going to set the security level of 100. Now I'll issue, I'll issue the no shut. Now from here, I'm going to exit out for a second, and I'm going to give my router a host or my firewall a host name. So it's host name. Uh, we'll just do 3CI training for the host name. Now as we can set there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to issue the show um, show interface IP brief. I'm going to make sure all my interfaces are up. And as we can see I've got the outside is up and it received an IP address via DHCP 192.168.2.1 and my Ethernet address of um, internal of 172.16.1. So everything looks good from here. Now 
I've got to go in and put my global statements in. Now, my global statement is what we're going to use to translate our IP addresses to the outside. Well, since I am getting it via DHCP, we're going to have to use PAT. So, and the statement works like this. Outside. Now, global outside. And I'm going to say um, 1, give it a number. And then I'm going to say based on the outside interface. So now, as you can see, outside interface address added to the PAT pool. So now, whenever hosts go from here and traverse out to the Internet, we're going to use port address translation based on the IP address of this outside interface. Now, the next thing i got to do is define my NAT pool. What addresses are going to be NATed? So uh, it's going to be NAT inside, because we're going to tell what the inside host one and then I'm going to define what hosts are going to be allowed to um, be translated or will be translated and we'll just put the subnet mask in there now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out here and I'm going to verify my routing table so I'm just going to do show route now in here you can see that I've got a dynamic route that's going to send um, all traffic out to the to the gateway that it received from the DHCP server so let's go ahead and just verify and test this real quick and see if it works now as you can see here um, I've got my local um, DHCP server going here so what I like to do is let's go to th uh, my website here um, 3ci training dot com and as you can see it is now pulling up to the outside world now realize I'm going through double NAT here so the process has slowed down slightly, um, but it will find it and it will go out and um, and pull up my website. So, I hope you um, enjoyed this little short video on how to configure a PIX firewall or ASA device to uh, connect to a service provider's cable modem or uh, DSL modem via DHCP. Thank you and have a good day.